When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When the funds are low and the debts are high And you want to smile but you have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt. As-salamu alaykum and welcome to Let's Talk on Huda TV. Uh, we're continuing in our coverage of the political situation in Syria as part of our campaign uh, to show our solidarity and support of the Syrian people during these times of the Arab Spring and this revolution and this massacre in Syria. Because indeed, we can't say this is just a, 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 a civil war with two equally uh, armed groups. No, it's, just, it's one side heavily armed uh, massacring, killing civilians, it's w which we have seen on the news uh, time and time again. So like I said, this is part two of our, of our, our two-part series, Inside Syria. I'm fortunate enough and very pleased and honored to have uh, two very special guests. Uh, of course, we have an exper experienced diplomat, Mr. Jalal Rashidi, as well as a Syrian activist, a very interesting young man who has a lot of experience and contacts inside Syria, which is why we have titled this series, Inside Syria, to give a face and some awareness and to create empathy within our hearts for the Syrian people, and that is, of course, Mr. Hazem al-Hakimi. Assalamu alaikum to both of you. Thank you for joining me, Mr. Dalal. Thank as you. As well as Brother Hazem, thank you so much. Alaikum salam welcome. <coughs> Excellent. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And, of course, we have our studio audience and our, our group of young men. I would like you guys to start off by telling me where you are from and just tell me what you know about Syria and what, uh, and if you see a positive outlook for Syria. Uh, first of all, my name is Sharif Ahmad. Um, I, I was studying at al Alton faculty at Shams University. And you are um, from? Uh, from Cairo and I do like languages and I'd, I'd like to feel profession in many languages in order to uh, work in politics Enjoy. and for the relation both at the same time. This is number one and um, about um, the Syrian issue. Um, we have all to, all Muslims all over to unite and have to wa we have to have one world to stop all what's happening r right now in Syria. Um, we can't watch and have just comments that we just, um, my heart goes to you, Syrian people and all of that. It's not the solution. We have to, uh, well, uh, tell you the truth, many other countries are conspiring against Syrian people. So shouldn't we give, give hands to each other? Stop I agree this. with you, Brother Shreya. I think it's, it's, it's sad when, when people say, okay, pray for Syria, we, our hearts are with you. Well, it's obviously not enough. And like you said, you know, I, people need to, we should be taking action. Yeah. And that's without, that goes without doubt because the conspirators and people on the other side uh, are definitely taking action. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, people, the countries like, you know, well, we don't, you know, Iran, Russia, uh, yeah. China. What about the, the Muslim side, the Arab side? What about the, the, the side that has the truth on their side? Uh, yeah. Why aren't they taking action? Just talk, that's yeah. all. So, excellent point. Go ahead, brother. Assalamu alaikum. My name alaikum. is Suleiman yeah. Bakr Musa. I'm a medical student in Ukraine. Uh, personally, are I you, think... Are you Ukrainian, brother, or are you from originally? I'm from Nigeria. You're from Nigeria, and you're studying in Ukraine? Yes. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, personally, I think the perseverance and the persistence in the Syrian people is actually what's going to make them win, because directly, they are the only people, mm -hmm. they are the only group of people who can win this war. Nobody's going to help right. them. They don't have okay. anyone to help them. That's a great attitude. So, yeah. so, believe me when I tell you, we'll sit back and watch down the Syrian government destroy themselves. Because what? Absolute power, like a great sociologist said, I can't remember his name, corrupts. Uh, absolutely corrupts. Absolute yeah. power, absolutely, absolutely corrupts. corrupts. Yeah. So, watch this government settle down and destroy themselves. Yeah, right. But you say only the Syrian people can win this thing. Why do you say that? Because, looking around, no one is... As in, the, 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 like, unlike Libya, where we have oil, in Syria you just have like the the youths and their brains and stuff like that. I mean, other countries want the Muslims. I can't name those countries. I don't want the Secret Service around me. <laughs> <laughs> other countries, other countries want the Muslims to go away. I mean, they really hate the Muslims, the Islamophobia and stuff like that. So what's Assad doing? I mean, Assad is killing Muslims. They can just sit back and watch and say, "All right, good. Thanks for doing my job for me. I mean, I'm not paying you, and you're doing my job for right. me." Then. Talking about the religious um, whatever Aspect. in it, yes. So only this, because they, they are so strong with themselves that they don't even want any external help because they know it's going to just spoil everything. It's going to make things worse, actually. So I just think, basically, inshallah, the Syrian people 
are the only ones who can get this over with. They'll deal with it the way they deem fit, which I think is right to some extent. And inshallah, we'll watch the government crumble because they too much power. I mean, the only two things yeah. the only two things that can kill a man, like we saw in Hitler and in some other cases, if it isn't a woman, absolute power will destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point. I think I, I like what you said about they have to do it themselves because, like I always say, freedom has a cost, and you can't wait for other people to help you. You have to do it yourself. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, brother Sami man. Go ahead, brother. Assalamu alaikum. My salam. name is Muhammad Ali. I'm a student at Al Azhar University, uh, English Department of uh, Sharia and Law, and uh, I'm from Cairo. And when we talk about Syria, I think the situation is very clear for us. It's awful triangle based on uh, oil and uh, weapons and old and true Shia between mm. Syria and uh, Iran. Mm. Uh, it supported them for that and for Russia because she is waiting for oil from mm. them. So and it's, it's, it's now the time for uh, Arab to take uh, some decision and uh, always we we um, agree on nothing we have now to make something positive um and what what we can do for them is just to pray for them yeah, for us yeah, because we don't have any hand in this thanks for coming brother assalamu alaikum alaikum salam brother uh this is muhammad toil um actually um what i think about syria um i still remember the picture of the girl from hims she was, you know, raising up, um, um, okay. asking, yeah, she's saying, Aghithu, you know, she's calling the people, other people, to um, to support. What did the banner say in Arabic, then translate it to English? Yeah, Aghithu Ahla Hims. You know, this girl herself. What do you mean? Translate it, brother. Yeah, uh, it, mea it means that. Uh, s um, SOS, like yeah, Mr. support Mr. us. Support us, support us. people. SOS, Hims. like Mr. Jabasa, excellent thing. Yeah. You know, the same girl, after that, after like two weeks, she has been killed. It's very, very, you know, yeah. emotional. That, you know, you see th this girl while crying and, you know, right. and after that she's killed, it's very emotional. But How can, you know, in the past, during the, the Sahara time, you know, when uh, just a woman, she's been harassed, a war is war, you know, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he waged a war. Just for one woman. For one woman being harassed. Right. You know, not being killed. What about being killed? What about a, a girl? Yeah, of course. Know. Brother, you, you, you said you're from Egypt as well, right? Yeah. Were you scared that something like this would happen in Egypt when you guys had your revolution? Were you afraid that it would go down to this level of violence? And um, or were you yeah, calm? sometimes, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, but I'm yeah. glad I didn't. That's very good. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Brother Muhammad Tal. Thank you, Brother. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Muhammad Yusuf. Okay, uh, after the Egyptian revolution, I, I thought that we, we make the best thing uh, in the world. But uh, after I followed the, uh, the, Egyptian, the Libyan revolution, I thought uh, it is uh, nothing yani, better than that. But after I, I followed the Syria revolution, after I, I, see, uh, I saw how, I see how people there struggle and uh, uh, how the uh, human life turn on numbers in a in, in news bar. I, 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 lear, I learn it from them every day, uh, the meaning of hope and, and struggle and, and patience. And, uh, uh, and I think their cause yani, deserve, deserve it, deserve their, their precious blood and the freedom and the dignity worth that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Yusuf. Thank you. Salam so alaikum. My name is Salam Ashri. I'm studying Sharia in law uh, English in English. And I'm, I'm from Giza. And uh, I just thought I can say I feel sad from what's happening in Syria. I see every day Muslims kill each other. And uh, the case really, and really it became complicated. It changed from political one to religious one. And uh, just uh, note the uh, no Syrian against the government, the uh, Russia and <coughs> Iran supporting their government. So it's very difficult to them just to win. But I hope to. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Thanks. Mr. Jalal, you worked in a diplomatic capacity for many years for the Egyptian government. What work did you do in the Middle East and in, in, in Syria in particular? Do you have any experience there? Or what work have you done? You know, um, uh, unfortunately, I was working uh, mostly in foreign countries. Actually. Oh, uh, you meaning not Arab countries? Yeah, I worked in Argentina, in India. Oh, okay, interesting. And uh, I worked in the United States for about 12 years. 
Okay. And you wrote a book in India about India, about like atoms and stuff. India is a great country. And <coughs> I think, uh, though it is not our uh, subject, but uh, generally speaking, uh, these people are simple, uh, but uh, they, have s they have got certain determination. And they have been able to achieve what they are now in terms of technology, and s especially uh, uh, communication technology, etc., because they are persistent and perseverant. Well, I hope that we can uh, adapt that to... No, the they are... <coughs> the illiteracy in India is too big. It's bigger than in what is in Egypt. Okay. It's a huge country. Right. With many dialects, 200 dialects, <laughs> and many languages. Right. And many, many religious, uh, religions. Yeah. But still, they have got a leadership. But look at the contrast. Now, you said India has over 200 languages a strong vision and they're going with good leadership to look to the future yeah. and create a better economy and life for themselves. So we here in the Middle East, we have one language, one people, but with no leadership. Exactly. Right, Brother Hazen, what do you think about that? Yes. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is a very fair statement. I wouldn't say there is no leadership. There is a leadership that's taking advantage of the people. It's okay. not doing good <laughs> right. for the people. Yeah, right, right, right. That's How is it, why is it developed like this? Why, I always say there's no political culture in the Middle East. Why, why in Western Europe if we live in, in Personal why? vested interest. That's it, that's it. I mean, that's simple as it is. It, it can get you. Yeah. yeah, you want to, some people, it's, you know, it's, some people would like to have power, influence, and money also. Whatever. Right, right. Especially power. If this is the main You, you have got an example He's here in, uh, in Egypt, actually. Mubarak started uh, as an ordinary man, and he gave a very colorful and beautiful statement in the beginning of his uh, uh, of, of his tenure. His tenure, yeah, yeah, in 1982. And all of a sudden, in about five years, uh, he's changed completely because people around his disciples. And then, <coughs> when his son came from London, Jamal, right. of course, he was having also great expectations etc ambition. his wife also has but got her, her own ambitions and that uh, went into his uh, you know his brain it's it's well, but yeah it, it's amazing how to think where those people are now the sons in jail Hosein Barak on trial I never thought uh, that I would see this and I never thought I'd see this he never spring. he never and they never thought of that also I live that's, in the that's why they were working on that sort of uh, path Right, right. Of uh, grabbing everything in the yeah, land. the money, the interest. I mean, uh, you see, you see, for example, Gamal Mubarak. You know, I have no no grudge about about you know towards him personally as such, but as as a person, you no, know, he was an economist. He worked in some uh, financial institutions in London. Right. And that's all his background. That's his background. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he came and found that things are open. Everybody is giving him his. In bowing for him and giving him all <laughs> sorts of, you know, yeah. respect and you know, right. glamour, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it shot him in, into his head. In into his head, and right? His, uh, I mean, I uh, mean, and he thought that as a 46 uh, years gentleman uh, man, he would like to become the uh, control the, the whole country right. of Egypt. You know, yes, there is no harm actually. We have good examples in. <coughs> Obama, for example, is young. He's about 46. Yeah, but the method of taking they power is the point. Uh, actually, uh, the prime minister of, uh, of England. He's a young man, but they took if you take power through the legal channels, not just to grab the country yeah, from your yeah, father. Yeah. Um, the, which is also, going back to Syria, is what Bashar Assad has done. His father controlled the country for many years, and now his son. Exactly. Uh, Brother Hazem, you, were, you, you live in Syria for some time? Yeah. Uh, what, what was the mood all before the Arab Spring? The Syrian people, were they happy? Were they sad? Were they, did they enjoy a nice co a standard of living? I mean, was there always this rumblings of a revolution? Was there was it like a pot on the oven, like I say, and you, you put the lid on it and you boil it? At some point, it will explode. Did you, did, did Syria always have this kind of People feeling? People always, they, it's like they seem to have no problem with it. With it. They were getting along and they were getting along. So, so on the surface, oh, yes, exactly. Nobody dared. Okay, uh, out of the, fear. Exactly. I, I, yeah. My family, within my family, nobody dared talk about Bashar or his father. Out of fear. Inside Syria or outside Syria even. Out of fear. Yeah, imagine that. So I noticed when you go to the Middle East, if you go to, to shops and coffee shops, they put a picture of the president in a frame. Mm -hmm. I said, that's strange. Like, you wouldn't go to America where I'm from and you see a president, of, a picture of Bill Clinton on the wall or something of a private business. <laughs> but I asked, I said, why do they do that here in the Middle East? They said to show that they are supporting the regime and out of fear. 
you know so i think this is what people don't get the government is from the people for the people yeah it's not for those who just want to stay there and steal everything yeah right that's it that's an excellent excellent point uh mr Jada, what do you make of this idea i think it's part of arab culture in my pers personal opinion um they support the strong man and they're loyal so even if they have a, a leader that's not a good leader they're very loyal to him and they're afraid to to appear disloyal so even if you have a president bashar assad or, or maybe Hosni Mubarak or any leader even if they don't like him, they're kind of afraid. As uh, uh, it's part of their culture, I think. No, it's not. That they are not. I mean, basically, in the beginning, they are not afraid because they're not, not afraid. The nature is not to be. They feel they yeah. feel they'll be disloyal. They are usually, they are good, you know, good-hearted people, and uh, majority is pious. You know, the yeah. religious yeah. people. You see, and they feel that the 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 ruler is their leader, uh, leader, and, yeah. and everything. Right. And they give him that sort of, you know confidence and uh, loyalty yeah. and belongings except belongings etc because of that but uh, of course i mean power shot in would shoot in his head uh, or yeah. in their head yeah and uh, things start, start changing because it's you are as a person of course right you of have course. you know it, from one person to another person it is a little bit different but usually usually power is something which is somebody everybody would like to keep yeah of yeah. course yeah of course and uh, this yeah. is uh, another point it's like we don't have surveillance over this power in the arab world right it's like they have this power it's like okay who can take you out if you do something wrong Th they just the ones in power take out everybody yeah right, right who can right. control them you know what the, the mistake that these people make like Bashar al-Assad or Hosni Mubarak or any any dictator in any part of the world for example if i go to the united states and i say you know what this president is so stupid People say, okay, Malik, that's your opinion. I like him. Or maybe he is stupid. Big deal. Here in the Middle East, these people, if I said Bashar Assad is stupid, Hosni Mubarak is oh. stupid, let him say it. What happened? No, you, 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 know, you, you see what I'm saying? Malik. You diffuse, you, yeah. create, you create this tension yeah. by, by letting people not speak. Yeah, not only that, Malik, you see, we have got some default, some, you know, some sort of, some culture. You know, the man who is in charge, who is in power, he will find some people around him who would start, you know, praising him and keep uh, looking, trying to sh yeah. portray his, uh, as, a big man. As, a, as a as a sort of a god, something yeah, like this. Right, yeah. And these, uh, this is uh, this is what usually uh, people, you know, the n n nature, you know, human nature is weak. Right, right. So I mean, if you if somebody goes every day will t will tell you that you are good, you are big, you are nice, you are beautiful, you are. You of course, it affects course your ego. It yeah. will it will re precipitate in your mind, and you will think that you are big, as yeah. if you are say, you know looking into a mirror, and every day you are saying, of "I course. am good, I am beautiful, I am l tall, I am." Yeah, I'm you appear on the TV. Yeah. You, you know. be go, oh, wow, I'm on TV. I'm a big man. <laughs> so so you have to check your ego. Some people contribute to that. Yeah, you have to check your ego. People it for example, see the press, yeah, or the media at least, yeah, they contribute to it because everybody thinks if he goes to that, he will become part of the of the whole tribe yeah, exactly. around the, the ruler. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Before uh, I'm going to cut you off real quick. We're going to go to a short break, and when we come back, uh, we'll continue with your thoughts. You guys, stay tuned for more inside Syria. We'll be right back on Huda TV. <laughs> Do you want to learn how to recite the Quran? Do you want to read Islamic books in Arabic? You may enroll in a small group. A private lesson. Or at your own pace to fit your schedule. <laughs> Courses for sisters with female instructors. We're bringing you the latest software technology, professional instructors, and a state of the art classroom to the comfort of your home. Enroll now in Huda Academy. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge.
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Let's Talk Inside Syria Part 2. Uh, before the break, Brother Hazem, I had interrupted you. I apologize. I wanted you to go ahead and complete your thought. Uh, or if we can uh, it's about, we keep on saying power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. And we keep on blaming those people because they got corrupted. That's one part. But people, us, we let them be corrupted. I, I'll just say, for example, in Syria, I've seen people pray for Bashar. I was like, I even saw, and you can see images, you can find images on Google, people praying for Bashar. They're, do do, they're on, doing sujood yeah, for on I've Bashar. On YouTube. They yeah. even say things like, in, in Syria, we say it's like, God, then Syria, and freedom. Okay? They say, God, then Bashar. Who, who says that? Uh, they, no, no. They say, Bashar, then Syria, then freedom. Who says that? It's, it's like, people inside because Syria who support uh, Bashar al-Assad, and they're from that regime that kills people. I mean, this is the extent of the brainwashing that it's come to. I know even when I'm in the United States, when I hear people say, God bless America, and I hear this nationalism, it's funny to me. Then I came to the, uh, to the Middle East and I see nationalism, it's funny to me because I, I don't, it's made up, it's fake to me, I don't believe in it. Yes. So anyway, now you're saying the Syrians too themselves have contributed to this by saying, God bless Syria, God bless Bashar al-Assad. I think this is, uh, you know. That's what uh, Hazim said actually is very correct because we have seen on the screen of the television yeah. only yesterday, this uh, tribal people coming and uh, almost uh, praise him to, to hell. That's what I mean, Mr. Jalal. Where does this mentality come from, this idea? Where does this come from? I mean, th this way of thinking. I would never see, I mean, I can't They have built it. their own small world. Right, it's very right. small. Right. And the thing, as, uh, as uh, I mentioned before, I think that he is a ruler. That means he is, he is a representative of God on earth. Yeah, right. See? Right. Yeah, sort of. Just like the and times of Pharaoh. Also, yeah. it's illiteracy. It, it plays mm -hmm. a big role in this. And humiliation. People are really get humiliated to the point that they're in need for such things. Right, right. That's what they're playing too. I believe, I always say, I know we're going to go to the Syrian audience real quick, but I always say education is the key forward. Education literacy. also and political consciousness. As I, I gave you an example of India. India's illiteracy is very big, bigger than Egypt. And still, in about 20 years, they have changed the, the, the scene of... Uh, well, how, of how did they do it? In they became a nuclear power. Yeah, yeah right. And they are now, they are now managing the uh, co communication technology in, 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 uh, in, in, in England and in the uh, uh, in United States, especially in uh, Los Angeles. How do, you teach how do you teach political consciousness? Uh, it's needed in the Middle East. How do you teach people to become politically people sit and discuss things and uh, debate things right, and they right. have got a good uh, leader uh, around you know even if he's illiterate but he has got certain ideas right I, excellent point but there has I, I believe here in the Middle East that it's much needed is what Mr. Talal said but I believe that people here they haven't learned how to agree to disagree what do I mean yes. if we sit down here now three of us Mr. Jalal says something I don't like it but it has him say something I don't like it or I say something you don't like it like this at the end of the day we were civil with each other and we go home but here, I feel like they haven't learned that yet, and I think that will take time. Yes, yes. Very what do, you true. Do, do you do? you agree with that statement, Mr. Jalal? Yeah, yeah. And I think here also, one weak point in us, in us as uh, people of Egypt, I think. I'm talking about Egypt now. <laughs> go ahead. I think they are good-hearted people, and they go to the mosque and listen to whatever the preacher is saying. And the preacher is, says whatever, you know, right. blah, 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 right. blah. Maybe it's not always right. Maybe it's, maybe yeah, it's not yeah, always yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And you are, for example, uh, in, in the last election mm -hmm. of uh, this in Egypt, I mean, somebody would go to the, you know, in, in the provinces, etc., to the, to the mosque and says, if you say no, you go yeah. to hell. If you say yes, you are going to the paradise. And people believe it. Maybe some people uneducated believe people. believe that. Yeah, he, yeah. Wou he, he would learn, wouldn't like to go to hell. <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> but, but, but what is the literacy rate in the education level of Syria? I, I'm not an expert yeah, right, uh, right, right, in okay, that yeah. field. Yeah, so but uh, but uh, the literacy in Syria is high, much higher than in Egypt. Okay. Literacy. Say. Literacy is, okay, yeah. excellent. That's very good. Brother Suleiman, do you have a comment for us? Yeah. What the three of you just said is exactly just what I want to say, talking about illiteracy and uh, political awareness. Yes, I, I agree with illiteracy very, very much, and to a very little extent, pride. Very little extent, pride. My Arabic teacher in around June last year, he told me something. Kullu Arabi yazunnu huwa What does that mean? Every Arabian thinks, thinks he's a president. That he is a president. <laughs> 
So he's taking, uh -huh. taking, taking that pride, like what Hazim here said, he said, the Syrian people allowed the government to do so. My friend told me once, an Egyptian, he said, uh, sorry, a Nigerian, he said, how Egypt was during Mubarak's regime. If you leave an Egyptian with a tree that can't do anything, he wouldn't be able to insult Hosni Mubarak. That's Leaving a tree in front of an Egyptian with nobody around, he still wouldn't insult Hosni Mubarak. Take my country, for example. We have over 250 tribes in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Diversized everywhere in the country. But the unity between them is very amazing. How, how do they create thing. this? How? I don't just know. As in right from time, we have something, one kind of love that is, if a Nigerian, if you meet another Nigerian outside, they just, this is how they just connect immediately. So talking about that, coming back to the Arabian world, I mean, you speak one language, basically you have one religion. What is stopping you from loving each other? First of all, illiteracy, then pride. And you're not aware of your surrounding. You're not aware of what's happening in the world. I mean, behaving like this is something that is killing you. Talking about illiteracy, I, I've, I'm in an Arabian country. Being here in Egypt, what you said about uh, to agree, to disagree, something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can't tell an Egyptian his country is bad. He will never agree with you. You can't tell him, you can't point out a problem like, this is something, your country is bad in doing this. Even if he knows, sorry, I'm not castigating Egypt. Just but we could say, yeah, people, yeah. People, people, Arabians people, mostly, yes. I'm sure Niger people. Nigerians like this too. I'm of sure. course, Nigerians are Americans like this too. too. They'll become yes. offended. They'll never, they'll, they'll, they'll never tell you the truth and like, this is what's happening. But if you should settle down and agree, with each other, even them within themselves, they don't totally agree. If you settle down with yourselves and agree, like taking Syria as an example, I mean, what have you been doing for more than 30 years? Allow one family to oppress you for up to 30 years. Yeah. I mean, believe me, in Nigeria, you can't rule for two terms peacefully. That's just eight years because our presidency is four, four years. Right. You can't rule for two terms peacefully. You must have, you must have a problem. You even want to leave the power immediately right. because yeah. the country will give you so much stuffs yeah. and you yeah. wouldn't just be able to handle it that's why they just need the most qualified people so talking about syria i think illiteracy plays <coughs> a very very big role there because i mean if these guys are open-minded like we have people like hazim <laughs> i mean if they're there we have a lot of them there the perseverance and, and the spirits they have at the moment is something that can make them conquer the government i i believe in that so much yeah of course excellent point but thank you very much Salim, for your comments i will have to say though you know in defense um Sometimes when you are living in a country and if you say something, the Secret Service will hurt you and beat you and you have something to lose. I mean, you know, it's hard to, to speak up. It, it's not that easy. I mean, I lived in the Middle East uh, before the Arab Spring. And I used to always say, well, why don't you guys speak up? What's going on? Uh, you guys express your political opinions. And they said, no, Malik, you're, you're naive to what's going on here. It's not permitted. It's not, you know, <laughs> trust me, we have our own opinions. But if we say it, we have, we're putting everything in jeopardy. I, I can quote a million examples here in the Middle East. I remember there was a bomb recently, in, uh, a couple of years ago in Alexandria, mm -hmm. and they interrogated the guy, and they killed the guy in the interrogation, and they yeah, sent yeah. the body back home to the guy's mother. With yeah. no justice, nothing. This is, this is so serious. people are scared, you know. So I understand that people are scared. It's not that I easy. I think to uh, uh, we are losing something here, which I think, from my own point of view, I'm, I'm sure it's a little bit it's very important. We need some sort of a code of ethics, which is not there. Unfortunately, we have, you know, the, you know, imperialism has actually planted in our psyche. Oh, psyche, I mean, certain things that, uh, you, when you see, you, we have got a, a proverb says that, the, you know, uh, try to, uh, to divide and then you rule. Divide and conquer, it's the old British way, right? Yeah. yeah. So here actually, our uh, fathers and uh, and uh, grandfathers actually they have they have been living in that sort of atmosphere of the old uh, imperialism you know proverb right right and that's why I think as I mentioned before I think I am a little bit optimistic in 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 the younger people younger generation not on us right because in a family the young people will learn from their fathers or so from their parents. If their parents are not educated, not only in uh, classically, but educated politically, socially, right, etc., right. even in the social sense, uh, they they will not uh, uh, they they will not grow up. I mean, otherwise, and will not go forward. Uh, yeah, but I think maybe maybe, and I, I, I'm dreaming, but I hope that this dream dream will come true that 
the individual ratio will be better, is well better educated, and he will ha has gone through different experiences whether he'll, he he they like it or not. Right. Yeah. And they, at at a later stage, I think the uh, the new families in Egypt will be better. I think. I hope better so. Better educated. Actually, thank you, Mr. Yeah. But it has, go ahead. Uh, I would just like to comment about th two things. It's like. Uh, the first point we were talking about is like the regime puts us in fear. Right. Uh, let me tell you something. I I'm a Syrian. I never actually like to meet new Syrians. Why? Before the revolution. It's like I was always afraid of other Syrians. It's like this guy came working with the secret services. It's like he'll be taking my own words. You know, it's like yeah. I don't want to meet that guy. Yeah. I'll just stick somebody else. You know? Yeah, there's always a fear in your mind. Exactly. Yeah. He's now, not very sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, uh, now, uh, as anybody who just looks Syrian, I just go ba go down to them. It's like, hi, how are you? It's like, salamu alaykum. Yeah. Can, it's like, Can I get to know you more? Are you from Syria? Oh, so we got to get, uh, get along and be friends and stuff like that. Yeah, right. Things change. This is the first point. Second point is we're talking about this, like our generation and our parents' generations. We've lived in our parents' fears. Right. I, I still remember, uh, it's like w when the revolution started in Syria, even in Egypt. Okay, right. my parents were telling me, okay, just leave Egypt now. It's the revolution. We want to get. Because you were in Cairo during those days. Yes, yes. Okay. And I was like, no, I'm not leaving. Those are my friends. This is like my second country to me. It's like yeah. I won't leave this. I, I will participate and I will help my friends in this. Like I'm a medical student, so it's like I can help medically in, yeah, in right, such excellent. problems. Right. And when the Syrian revolution started, they're like, hasn't. Don't go protest, don't do any trouble. You know how it goes long in Syria. I, I, I lost my uncle in the 80s yeah. due to the regime also. Oh. So it's like they're really afraid. Scared like, about yeah, that. Yeah, something might go wrong. Like, so what? Uh, my, my people, the Syrian people, have asked for something and I will support my people. Yeah, right, right, of course. Like you said, there's always an underlying, underlying fear when you, when you... But I think now one good thing we can say about this whole thing is when you struggle so strong for something, when you achieve your goal, you value it and you take care of it. That's what I always say, you know, in the, in the Western countries when they had the American Revolution, French Revolution, where people die and people were killed, then you value what you have. Yes. So I think after such a thing like this, the Syrian people will value what they've had and what they've achieved, and they'll build the country uh, in they a better way in the future. They, are, they, they will gain this experience and uh, are taught uh, to fight for their own rights. You know point of view or opinion at least. I right. Think. I think yeah. all the Arab countries. That's why I'm saying that we p bet on the new generation, younger generation. Yeah, we're putting our hopes in Tunisia. And that's why here in Egypt actually the, 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 the uh, whoever is taken, uh, started this 25 uh, January uh, revolution right. are the younger people. Yeah. Not us. Right, on Facebook and all this because the regime is so old minded. Yeah, they're so yeah, old, yeah. they couldn't even and understand what hit them. Some people, like, <laughs> we started, I mean, joining them later. In yeah, the then speech. everybody got involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. I think Tunisia, Egypt, um, Yemen, Libya, Syria, Libya. Libya, all these, I think the, the barrier of fear is broken. Oh, yeah, they're living time. in fear and they're living in fear, yeah. and right, rightfully so. But now, for example, I don't think in the future when the government tries to do something they don't like, the people who were used to, they were accustomed to being scared and not saying anything. They won't accept it anymore. No, exactly. They will fight for their rights very now. Very true. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I think that's very important. We got a taste of freedom, and we're not. You're not gonna give, yeah, we're not going to give it back. Yeah. So I that's agree to that. And uh, remember, uh, one uh, very well-known uh, actor. Uh, what's his name? Ahmed. Uh, what's his name? Hamdi Ahmed. Okay. Uh, he said that never, it will not happen that anybody will be able to impose anything about on us never again never again yeah, yeah. In their term. finish well, this is forever it's uh, it has this is vanished whoever comes whoever comes even later the uh, Juan, the the mm. military the xyz whoever blah, 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 blah. and this nobody will, will accept it i mean uh, the people know their rights now and they will not shut no. yeah now now well, they know the rights and they want to take has it has fight and they have tested that yeah, they've tasted that freedom, now yeah, there's no freedom, going back. Yeah. No matter who's the ruler, they're not going to accept it yeah. anymore, and this is the main point. This is what something we should actually be very Which is a good happy uh, about. A sign, I think. And yeah. Yeah. We should like work on post-revolution. Uh, they're working on it here in Egypt, yeah. and they Big should time. start on it in Syria, inshallah. We're Once we get uh, top of the regime, it's like uh, we got to educate people about their rights. Right, yeah. People, seriously. You're a human being, you have rights. People exactly. don't uh, understand. We're going to talk more about that, and... Uh, about post-revolution in the Middle East when we get back uh, to more Let's Talk uh, Inside Syria Part 2. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty, and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Quran. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for? And the Prophet وسلم, was sent to all mankind. So the Ummah or the people of the Prophet وسلم, or all mankind since the time of the Prophet وسلم, till the day of judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Quran, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Let's Talk uh, Inside Syria Part 2. As uh, we mentioned earlier, we're continuing our coverage of the Syrian uh, situation in order to show our solidarity. Uh, Brother Hazam, before the break, we were talking about a variety of things with Mitra Jalal as well. And we were talking about now people know that they do have rights. I live in the Middle East and I felt like people, they let people trample over their rights because they're polite and they're kind and they're pious and they're nice and they're willing to give people the excuse. And they say words like, ah, oh, malesh, just never mind, no problem. But I say, no, that's not healthy sometimes, to some extent. No, you have to fight for your right. You have a right, don't let someone take, take it from you. And I think now, I think this uh, mentality has come to the Middle East. And yes. I think it's good. What do you, what do you think? What yes, it it's very good. It's like, before, people was like, they keep, kept on thinking, it's like, if this happens and I actually respond to this and ask for my rights, where am I going to go? Right. I guess like, you only get prison, tortured, or whatever, right. through the corrupt system. And right. then, but now people know what's wrong, and they will stand and in defiance. Right. Okay, that's my right. I will get my rights back. Yeah, I hope as a result of all this violence, all this revolutions, bloodshed, and in, uh, in the Middle East, I hope that this also going forward, they won't accept uh, bribery anymore. These a lot of these countries. This like will go down. Yeah. It yeah. Will. Because now people say no. I, I I don't have to pay you money on the side to get my paperwork, or I don't need to pay this policeman ten dollars to let him. You know, because people will, will fight for the rights because this is, this is happening in Egypt now, in Cairo even. Even Cairo. Yeah. Can, you, can you give us an example? Yeah, I think one of the uh, these uh, small mini buses. I think I saw it myself. Yeah, I was coming from the university, going to the, uh, my house. You know, right. one scene, and they say uh, this fellow was uh, fighting with a police uh, officer. I mean, short. I think the police officer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a police officer, and uh, usually before these police officers, usually they have already. Uh, have a, a certain money to be paid for them uh, from it's like a standard bribery ah standard bribery yeah answer. now these people do not want to b to pay so they uh, they would fight for it fight with this fellow and will maybe he will also curse him whatever it is <laughs> and he knows that he's not going to jail yeah that's mm -hmm. good i think this is a part yeah and we, if we didn't have these revolutions and this fighting in syria egypt tunisia it would, it would have continued as is as is as well, yeah as brother as i think you remember in, in tunisia the whole thing started because i think uh, uh the gentleman who was fed up t tell us a little bit about that yeah it's like uh he he actually burned himself to death that's in tunisia yeah. i'm talking it's like because he couldn't get political nor economical nor community justice in his life he was just so frustrated exactly and the same thing happened in every single country it's not it's not about the it's not about they burned themselves but it's the same symbol people want to live yeah. they're not allowing people to live at all N yeah. not, not as humans yeah you yeah, know I, I couldn't agree I couldn't agree with you more but then Muhammad in the back uh, well actually I have a question uh, to um, a doctor Jalal. and also brother Jalal. Um, do you think um, that uh, what uh, what is the role of media toward what's going on? Actually, to be honest, um, I believe that the news has a negative impact on the society. Why? When you uh, usually hear the numbers are 20 killers, uh, 20 have been killed in, in Syria. Next day, uh, 40 has been killed. Next day, you'll find that, halas, you know, that it's normal. Right. You understand? But when you... Um, uh, but 
you have to motivate people to do something. Yeah. Right? So, so you're saying, what is the role of media in these times? That's your question, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, excellent. Mr. what do you think? What can the media do? The media, media is so powerful. The media has a, big, a huge uh, role, actually, and a very influential role at one time during the Mubarak regime. Everybody was burning what they call Bukhur, sense. Uh, incense. Incense, yeah, uh, for the regime, sort of. Because they thought that they are going to gain out of it, and everybody, this yeah. fellow, whoever is writing, is going to stay in his chair, his chair, position, yeah. Uh, especially if he's an editor or news editor, whatever it is. Uh, now, the situation has changed. But still, the, the, there is a different uh, reasons now. The, the, the press, especially the press, and even some of the uh, mass media, you know, television, uh, channels, etc. They do uh, go for, yani for, uh, for show. They would like to give certain, you know, ostentatious, ostentatious, you know, news, right. so that uh, he, they are in the front, uh, front page or in the, uh, the yes, front. Yeah, they just give any sensational news to sell newspapers, for yeah, example. Yeah, newspapers, for example, they are working to gain more, more money. Whatever is a good story. Yeah, yeah, whatever is a good story, yeah. yeah. They call it yellow journalism, and right? And the other, you know, uh, the on the same level, somebody would talk uh, on in a TV channel, in a talk show or whatever it is, just to... Sh Catch viewers. Ah, uh, catch viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent All point. Right. Yeah. Brother Hazem, do you think by making talk shows and talking about Syria, we see a lot of the, the channels now having special programs for Syria, as we do at night, Syrian Massacre, um, here on Huda TV, and many other programs, and now we're talking about on Let's Talk. Do you think this helps create awareness and helps put pressure directly on the political situation? Yes, sure. Uh, it does help a lot, actually. Because uh, le let's say it's like when people get aware about one thing, They've got their governments. Their governments are moving. It's like they're, they aren't doing anything to help Syria. Uh, so th they, those people, when they get aware by this, and it's like they get inside with themselves like those other Arabs, those other Muslims, those other humans, they're just like us and they're dying. We should right. support those people. Right, right. You know, it's like, so people will say, okay, I should write letters to my government. Okay, right. I should talk to government officials. Okay, yeah. I should donate money to those people. Right. I, I should do whatever I can to help those people, those other humans, Muslims, Arabs, just like me. Yeah, that's what, an excellent point. We can use the media in a positive way to, to help people. Speaking of helping people and using the media, how can we help the people? If we're living in a faraway country, Australia, America, America, Europe, Middle East, how can we help the Syrian people? Do you guys know of any organizations that we can pe viewers can donate to and ourselves as well? I know you mentioned the Arab Doctor Syndicate. It's Tell us about the them. Yes, they're called the Medical Arab Union. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can actually, they've got bank accounts, but they're in Egypt, I think, the bank accounts. Okay. Uh, so it's like you can send money there and it will arrive into Syria to help the people because of the crisis which is happening inside Syria. I, I will just go back to this yeah. and talk about the problems inside Syria. Other ways how to help people, pray for Syrian people. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like uh, every time, it's like when you're at night, just think of that person who has no shelter no food they lost two of their only children mm. just because the regime wanted to last yeah okay. exactly well put just because someone wants to last yeah exactly pray for those people mention those people okay it's like okay uh, okay i feel sorry for the syrian people you want to do something for the syrian people you've got your own facebook account twitter accounts you go see your friends every now and then tell your friends that something is going inside syria it's like every week just mention Syria and your posts and your talks. Okay, yeah. one thing we once did was on Mother's Day, we gave out numbers to uh, numbers of uh, Syrian mothers who lost their children in the revolution. And some some of my Egyptian friends they called them. They're they says like Happy Mother's Day. Oh wow! I, I know you lost your children. We really feel sorry. That mother started crying. Who it's organized like, that? It's a, a wonderful thing. A couple of Syrian activists actually organized that. It's yeah. something, you know, it's like. We feel a small the thing, so, so yeah. a small thing that has a great impact. Exactly, yeah. this is one of the things that's w that you can do. It's like one thing people can do actually is uh, talk their government officials, or it's like write your congressman. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Uh, we want to help those people. Pressure your governments to help the Syrian people. Yeah, of course. Of them. What about the Red Cross, Red Crescent, and the humanitarian organizations? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're online, and you can donate to them. But why are you smiling, Jalal, Mr. Jalal? Yeah. You don't think they're too effective, right? No, it is effective on, uh, on the level of humanitarian aid, yeah, only, but only, otherwise, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. Even you at that level. You need much more than that. You, you need, need much more than you that. You need more political pressure. Support. This yeah. is the key yeah. to the solve, yeah. not by sending yeah. band-aids and stuff. Yeah. Right. As, as I got a comment on this. We keep on seeing the International Committee. Mm. Okay. They keep on saying, okay, we'll do more sanctions on Syria. This should solve the problem. I got an example for a sec. If you actually get a thief, okay, <laughs> and he robs something from you, right. okay, you're just like, okay, just a little bit of sanctions, a little bit of problems, <laughs> like, no yeah. problem. But when somebody kills hundreds and thousands of people what's your response okay just more sanctions yeah that should solve the problem no you should take that person to court yeah perhaps, you okay know, and that's what the international committee isn't doing right, they should right. actually take those people to the international criminal court yeah of the course. whole regime of course and that's why i said mr Jabal, uh kofi nan should have been there to arrest him not to treat him like a legitimate head of state yeah. uh, do you see bashar al-assad in a criminal court soon do you think that is a likely scenario? You can see him, but not very soon. You will see him, yeah. but not very soon. Yeah. And this is speaking of your many years experience in the diplomatic community. You think we will see him there, but not soon. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent uh, uh, comment. I certainly hope so as well. well I think even the international community and the, you know, the big powers at one time, they will, I think, they will change their mind. Yeah, so because uh, for them, he's just the head of the state of Sy Sy Syrian head of the state. Right, because these people are disposed about some point when the powers that be get fed up with them, they will just change change the face, it, yeah. it seems. But we hope that there's, a, as we see images of what's going on in Syria, we hope there's a sin sincere change uh, to the Middle East. Hazem, what has stopped you from going over there and using your medical expertise? Inside Syria? Yeah, um, it's so dangerous, yeah? Yeah, let's right. say, no, I, I couldn't actually enter Syria. You uh, can't enter in the first place, right? Because uh, after the revolution started, I went on a couple of demonstrations, and it's like my name was all over the board. In Syria? No, I was on demonstrations here in Cairo, in, uh, in front of the embassy. Oh. Just like a couple of, like, let's say, uh, hundreds. Was blacklisted. <laughs> yes, oh. exactly. I was blacklisted from entering the, on the country. If I would have entered, I would have like, been took to pr prison, and I would never be on this show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At least here you can create awareness. And s and you, they need people everybody on the outside. Ha everybody has their own rules. You can go in disguise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Everybody has their own rules. So but you can be outside and create awareness. I can be smuggled into Syria and act as a doctor there. There are doctors there. Okay, they are in need for more doctors, specialized doctors, not me. It's like I I I'm working on other stuff. Yeah, everybody right. has their own role in this revolution. Right. Even non-Syrians yeah, play everyone. a role in this revolution. Yeah, excellent point. Yeah, excellent point. Um, but Bashar al-Assad, I remember his uh, in Cairo recently, they stormed the Cairo, the embassy in Cairo. <laughs> they threw his picture on the ground and they broke it. That time they still had a consulate in Cairo. Have uh, the Arab countries now begin to pull their, their diplomats out of Syria? They have. And they ki they've expelled their... They have. They've, they've done this some time ago, yeah. They didn't expel any Syrians, but... They I mean the, um, the consulate workers. Well, I think the Syrians uh, will, will uh, have been doing the same. If the Saudi Arabians yeah. have yeah, pulled and the Iraqis... Uh, they will do the same. I yeah, think. of course, yeah, yeah, at some point. But I was actually so proud and pleased to see that in, in Cairo. Were you there that day in Cairo when they broke the, I yes. saw it on, on the news, they broke uh, They broke uh, into the embassy and they took a big picture they had of a cross and they threw and it. They, we, uh, we actually stormed the embassy twice. Twice, yeah. <laughs> okay, were you, was there many people arrested? I remember seeing this on the news. Were, were you arrested as well? Uh, no, I wasn't arrested. And yeah, some were arrested and we had problems. And even recently, uh, we're talking like two weeks back, a couple of Syrians were arrested here in Egypt, but uh, they were freed yesterday, 1 a.m. Oh, okay, so. excellent, excellent, excellent news. Uh, you guys, thank you for joining us at this, uh, at, uh, this episode about uh, Inside Syria Part 2. We certainly hope in a year that we have an episode about post-revolution Syria. Hopefully. And we can talk about how great it is in post-revolution Arab Spring. And that's something that we forgot to mention about, okay, we're, we're in the middle of these revolutions. When Sir Kofi, I will find out what Sir Kofi Annan's uh, peace. Yeah, we follow up. He's going to work on <laughs> yeah, 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 excellent point. And I want to see, I want you guys to come back in, in a year and, and, and read and address this, this issue again about the Arab Spring and where we are in a year and if what we said, in fact, uh, carry some validity if these this things happened. Came, yeah, if these things happen or what happened. And you guys in the studio audience, thank you very much for joining us for the second part of our two-part series in two-part series inside Syria. And of course, our final message is for the Syrian people. And we want to remind you to stay steadfast in your deen and remember that you guys are doing something that the whole world uh, hasn't been able to do. You guys are, are embarking on a, a goal that is amazing. And inshallah, it's been a year. There's no turning back now. You will achieve your goal with the help of Allah. And keep in mind, the Israeli Foreign Minister of Defense, Amos Gilad, said on Israeli radio, the fall of the, uh, the fall of the Bashar al-Assad regime is the beginning of the end for Syria. I mean, that is an amazing statement. And you guys are so close to achieving your goal. I certainly hope that this happens soon, inshallah, and that we have programs about post-revolution Syria and how wonderful it is. 
For all our viewers, remember our email address, talk at hooded.tv, especially for you guys in Syria. If you have access to internet, if you can share your stories with us, talk at hooded.tv. Send us pictures, stories. We need to share your personal experiences. We need to hear them and know them from you in order to share them to the world. So like I said, talk at hooded.tv. Tell us your stories so we can use our position here in the media to help you guys there. So until next time, we leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you're tracking seems all uphill When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you're tracking seems all uphill When the funds are low and the dips are high And you want to smile but have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must, but do not ever quit. Success is a failure turned inside out. Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt. Success is a failure turned inside out. Let's talk.